Welcome to another episode of the Give Me Liberty podcast. Euthanasia is gaining ground in the West. Several European nations, including our neighbors to the North, Canada, what can be more European than Canada, and even some of those in the US are pushing for euthanasia, not only to be legalized, but for it to be normalized. Christians everywhere must be the most outspoken opponents of legislation of any kind that seeks to diminish the value of human life. Here to discuss all of this and more is Alex Schattenberg, the executive director of Canada's Euthanasia Prevention Coalition on the Give Me Liberty podcast, starting now. And welcome back to another special edition of the Give Me Liberty podcast. I'm joined today by the founder and executive director of Canada's Euthanasia Prevention Coalition, Alex Schattenberg. Welcome, sir, to the Give Me Liberty podcast. Um, uh, yeah, I'm pleased to be with you, especially with uh, all the things that are going on with this issue of euthanasia and assisted suicide. I think it's uh, it's a tough topic, but it's important that we talk about it. Absolutely. And so, Alex, I think one of the things just coming out of COVID-19, I, you know, I had several friends, Canadian pastors as well. Churches were shut down. I think they were kind of shocked to see what was taking yeah. place, but how advanced uh, progressivism really was in Canada. And so we were thoroughly surprised with uh, progressivism here in the United States, but then also how authoritative, how quickly uh, Trudeau and the various lockdown policies uh, basically separated people from their churches and they were isolated, they were alone. And we see that suicide rates went up globally, mental health issues globally, um, people oftentimes forget, we talk about the, the battle for the womb, uh, the pro-life movement, the advancements that have been made, as well as setbacks in the past year. But I think one of the things that often gets forgotten is the subject of euthanasia. So when we talk about you know the culture of death mm. and, and all yes. the different cultural advancements that have been made, as well as legislative achievements that have been made, Canada's on the front lines of this issue. Uh, you know a lot about this, and I wanted you to kind of first talk about for your your organization, what you guys are doing, what you're fighting there in Canada. So we've been around a long time. So we, um, I've been doing this full time since 1999. We had several court cases in the 90s. We had a we had a euthanasia push uh, way back then already, and uh, we were successfully able to hold it off for a very long time. Uh, but then around uh, 20, so we had uh, just, you know, there was a le piece of le legislation in Canada that was voted on in 2010 that was overly, overwhelmingly defeated. So we defeated euthanasia overwhelmingly and the euthanasia de lobby decided they were going to go to the courts then. They went to the courts and they brought a difficult case to the courts, you know, a case of a woman with uh, ALS, which of course is a terrible medical condition. And uh, that went through the courts and uh, the Supreme Court of Canada, in effect, in 2015, they decided to uh, strike down our laws protecting people from euthanasia and assisted suicide. And that was around the same time as Trudeau then became our prime minister. And so the Liberal Party got a chance to legislate on euthanasia, which has been uh, uh, the, a big disaster ever since. Uh, and, you know, euthanasia is always a disaster, but uh, our legislation has been absolutely insane. Yeah. So this is where we're going and this is where we're headed. And I can tell you more pretty quickly. So we well, legalized in 2016. Yeah. And the law, the law originally said that your natural death had to be reasonably foreseeable, which wasn't defined. So we already had abuse or a weird cases happening in Canada from the very beginning because they didn't define that language, which would say that you had to be terminally ill. So without defining it, lots of people's natural, um, you know, natural death became reasonably foreseeable and then that was uh removed in 2021 so now what we're left in the law is that you have to have an irremediable medical condition so essentially almost everyone with a disability now qualifies to be killed or as it's better to say because it's more accurate poison to death because that's exactly what we're talking about to be brutally honest about what this is anyway so uh, this is where it's come and we've had uh, terrible cases going on about people who are people with disabilities who are living in poverty people with disabilities who have had a difficult time getting medical treatment who have become homeless these people are dying by euthanasia because they're being approved based on having a disability but it's the social reasons that are now leading them to want to have their life ended and 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 this has become more and more and more common and as of march of next year just uh 
to shock your listeners even more, uh, euthanasia for mental illness will become uh, legal as of March 17th of 2024. And when we're talking about euthanasia for mental illness, we're talking about mental illness alone. Of course, they would have to have an irremediable medical condition, which isn't defined in the law. But nonetheless, uh, what it means is essentially, I think it'll be interpreted to be meaning, meaning, meaning that someone who has a long-term chronic depression or long-term chronic mental health issues, they would qualify to be poisoned to death. It's it's pretty ridiculous if you start thinking about it. But all of this is crazy, okay? All of this is crazy. The concept of giving your doctor or nurse practitioner the right of law to kill you? Yeah. That's 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 not a good idea from the beginning. Uh, even if you're concerned about suffering, we can deal with suffering. But even if you're concerned about that, you know, giving someone the right in law to kill you is not a is not a very good idea. No. So so uh, going back just a little bit, 2016, basically you had the right to euthanasia, but it had to be term based on some kind of a terminal illness condition it, which it can, was not effectively defined that's correct yes. okay and then in 2021 that uh was basically removed so you could just for any reason correct in 2021 well not any reason you have to have an irremediable medical condition now that hasn't been defined either but it essentially means you need to have a chronic condition a long-term condition yeah so that's why you understand me saying about the disability question because people with disabilities uh, they might be otherwise healthy, but their disability means they have an irremediable medical condition. That's just how it is. That's the condition that they have. So they would qualify. And uh, that's what we're seeing. People with disabilities essentially all qualify in Canada. But if you go the step further, I was telling you about these people with uh, who are experiencing homelessness, these people. And if you think about having a disability, a lot of people with disabilities live in poverty. They might not have family supports, et cetera. They're living in poverty, and we, we know that this is the case, and uh, and yet now they qualify to be killed. Yeah. So these are the social reasons now that they're asking for euthanasia. They're saying, well, you know, I have no money to live on. You know, this one woman, uh, she went to the media saying she wants euthanasia because she's got – she doesn't even have $50 a, a month to live on after paying her rent, etc. And she says, I can't live this way any longer. Another woman said – uh, I can get medical treatment in the U.S., but I can't get it in Canada. But I can get euthanasia. So she asked for euthanasia, and she died by euthanasia. This is, a, you know, an insanity if you start thinking about it. But the whole concept of legalizing this in the first place is really pretty crazy. And I say it that way on purpose because, uh, you know, we, we like to lighten up our talk and saying, well, you know, well, you know, well, you know, we're talking about killing people. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. That's so, right. You know. All, all the reasoning we put behind it and all the, you know, and we should be human beings with a heart. So we should be moved by people's situations. And so I am, of course I am, but I don't, I don't ever agree with killing people. No, you know, there's other, other answers in all cases. And, and so, you know, looking at basically the culture of death, the arguments that yep. are often made, you go back to Margaret Sanger, right? Who was a founder yep. of Planned Parenthood. One of the things that she said that she was trying to tackle was this quality of life. When you think about all these impoverished, right. you think about these immigrants, you think about racial minorities, right? She wanted to come, uh, you know, basically just like Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. She wanted to come out, uh, come in as, you know, I'm I'm crusading for compassion. You know, I I'm trying to make sure that the quality of life is good for those who have. Right life. And so the idea is not to bring them into a world where there would be poverty, not to bring them into the world where they would experience heartache or they would experience all kinds of living situations, living conditions that don't afford them the kind of life that they would want, your best life now. Um, that means that what I'm really doing is is of, of the greatest social good because I'm taking this yep. away um, you know, from people to have to struggle. And all of this is based not on the understanding of the Imago Dei that we're created in the image of God. This is a humanist perspective. Uh, completely and entirely. This is a, this is a basically a perspective in which you remove God from the equation. I do not have any moral basis to take my own life as a Christian or as not, a, 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 you know, even if I wasn't a Christian, I would have no moral basis to take my own life because my life is given to me by God. There is an author and a creator of life. Yep. And, 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 and that, that right to life is also a responsibility to live. I, I think there is a responsibility that we have 
And so some people, you know, they they, they listen to this and like, oh, you're just religious folks and you're just touting well, your religion. Well, let me jump in a second here because yeah. there is a, a, an interesting point here. As much as I agree with you that suicide is not right and, and it's not something that I in any way have a, have a right to do in any way, shape or form. And I, and I would never, ever, ever suggest to anyone that suicide would be an answer to their situation. When we're talking about euthanasia, we're actually talking about homicide. We're talking about murder. Yeah. Suicide is something that you would do to yourself. And as, as much as we know that that's a terrible thing. And, you know, I had a friend when I was a teenager who died by suicide. And, you know, just mentioning the word, you know, wells up in my stomach, the emotions and the pain that I felt at the time. So there's nothing good in any way about a suicide. Nonetheless, I understand that it could be someone going through mental issues. They could be not themselves. They could be in whatever the situation. Nonetheless, euthanasia is not even that. It's about homicide. The doctor lethally injects you. The doctor poisons you to death. And then in the case of assisted suicide, it's similar. So it's the big lie, first of all. This is all about the big lie. They say this is about freedom. This is about a choice. This is about autonomy. And your show is about standing for freedom. So you would think, wow, well, maybe maybe this guy would support euthanasia because that's about freedom. But it's not about freedom. Yeah. It's the big lie. It's about giving doctors and nurses, in this case in Canada, with nurse practitioners can do it. So um, – I'm not going to get into the legislation too much because that'd be a whole different show. But I mean, the fact of it is, is the law gives them the right to cause your death. That's what the law actually does. If you read the law, that's what it says. And in Oregon, where they've legalized assisted suicide, it gives the doctor the right to prescribe lethal drugs to poison you to death. That's what it does. It gives them the right to be involved with causing your death. This is not about freedom. It's not about choice. And it's not about autonomy. In fact, it's a lie. It's deceptive. On top of it, it's about abandonment. Why do people ask to have their life ended in these terrible situations? Because a lot of people think, oh, Alex, these people are suffering greatly. Can you not have some compassion for them? I have compassion for people, absolutely. And I think we should be very compassionate. Sometimes, sometimes I challenge people. I say, wait a second. Maybe we're not being compassionate enough to people, but that doesn't lead to killing people. Okay, yeah. that doesn't lead to killing people at all. This is a, this is about a situation where people are going through a difficult time in their life. Absolutely. Yeah. It could be physical. It could be psychological. They're experiencing very difficult situations, and you've got a doctor or a nurse practitioner who's saying, "I I agree that your life is not worth living. I'm not going to provide you the care that you need, but I will help to kill you." I, or I will actually kill you in the case of euthanasia. And that's what it's about. And if you consider these cases, think about it. You know, a woman is saying, oh, I can't obtain medical treatment in Canada because that was the one case. She couldn't get medical treatment in Canada. She could get it in the U.S., but she couldn't afford to go to the U.S. to get it. But she could have euthanasia. She could have lethal inject injection. And somehow this is about freedom, choice, and autonomy because she's abandoned by our medical system Oh, but she can have death. So now this is her freedom. This isn't freedom at all. The homeless, someone who's homeless, is that about freedom, choice, and autonomy? Absolutely not. And what about the person who's just going through a very difficult situation and they're lonely? They're really, really lonely. And they're having a hard time, you know, finding a reason to live. That's not a new human emotion. It's not a new human feeling. It's it's a reality as a human being. But then that we kill them? Yeah. I, yeah. Like, come on, that's that's an abandonment. That's what it's about. It's it's about the big lie. I always say to people, euthanasia is another big lie. And if you say it enough that this is about freedom, people actually believe it. Since 1971, Liberty University has had one mission, training champions for Christ. We've been at this for a while. And in the shadow of the Blue Ridge Mountains, we have grown to be a global force. Today, Liberty runs over 100,000 students around the globe, studying across 15 colleges and schools. And among them, over 30,000 military students. Across 700 programs of study, we train as one. Nurses, artists, business leaders of the future and today. Together, we work to give back through service trips, local community work, and over 500,000 volunteer hours per year. And we play just as hard as we study with 20 NCAA athletic programs and 40 club sports teams. So who are we? We are Liberty University and we train champions for Christ. Yeah, but it's not true. It's you know, not true at all. we often say at the Freedom Center that um, true love Love is really predicated on truth, that without truth, you really can't have love. love. Love is not predicated upon 
a lie, right? And so oftentimes today we have these weapons of mass emotion. Uh, people right. uh, people um, basically um, you know, weaponize compassion, weaponize sympathy, weaponize oh. these deep, deeply felt feels, you know, the feely McFeels of the world, but it's not really based upon the truth. And so no, when people right. say, well, you don't you feel for these people? It's like, well, yeah. And, and but I, I also realize that I have responsibility uh, not to allow them to take their own life and certainly not to allow for a medically assisted homicide, as, as you point out. Um, you know, that that's, you know, we have to intervene. And, and as as people of the truth, um, who believe very much that we have a responsibility to our neighbor, to love our neighbor, um, we want to protect them from something like this. So how, you know, here's the problem that we often run into, Alex. You know, we, we talk about you can't legislate morality. That is a myth. <laughs> um, but you hear that often. Um, well, morality is being legislated, legislated right now, yep. and it's being legislated according to an ideology and a worldview. So a worldview is being propagated here. It's the only way that you can achieve euthanasia is you yep. have to have some predominant consensus view or a religion that's undergirding that, that view. Either what's the basis of, of, you know, by what standard do you allow euthanasia? So it is not worldview neutral. Um, it's not Christianity that's guiding and informing these decisions. No, it's radical secular humanism. That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. And it's eugenic. Yeah, it's based on eugenics. It's based on that there are certain lives that are not worth living. And if I were in that situation, I would rather be dead. But because you're in that situation, I agree that you are better off dead and I will make it happen. That's exactly a eugenic attitude. And uh, there's it's not about equality. That's the other lie. It's not about equality. It's not equality when somebody else kills you. That's not about equality. If they care for you that, that and they, they respect your life, that's equality. Absolutely. Because then you're respecting everyone's life and you're caring for everybody as much as you possibly can, that is. But when you kill somebody, that's actually about a type of a discrimination. That's, that's saying that your life isn't worth living. Your life isn't worth protecting. Yeah. And this is what it's about. So it's another form of of soft bigotry. Like I can pity Absolutely. you, but I, I don't really have true compassion. Um, yep. you know, th this is something too about gospel ministry and about the, the heart of the Christian faith. Jesus was about healing people and he was about seeking a physician. He was about, you know, not only forgiving them of their sins, but he was about pr improving their condition. And uh, so he fed people, he clothed people, right? He healed people. Uh, Christians are concerned about that thing. Uh, we're, we're concerned about the dignity of life as well as the sanctity of life. Uh, what, whereas, you know, secular humanists use the euphemistic term quality of life. We're talking about the That's dignity right. of life. Um, Absolutely. How should Christians then, I mean, whether they be in, the Canada, in Canada or in the United States, how should we look at this as a public square issue outside of the four corners of the four walls of our church? Well, we have to, first of all, be very clear about what this is and reject it because this is about killing. And, you have, and, it, and it becomes deceptive in another way because the other side is very quick to change the language. They want to call it aid in dying or they want to call it medical aid in dying or, or you know, these kind of things. They, they want to change the language to make you feel better about it, to make you think that it's not what it is. And we have to be willing to say what it is. We have to say, no, we don't accept killing people. On top of it, we have to be very clear that everyone deserves to be cared for. And as a Christian or as a person of faith, that uh, I, I realize that that is part of my call, my duty. But at the same time, um, we never accept killing. So, for instance, in my own country where euthanasia is legal, they say, well, what happens when you know somebody who's thinking of uh, dying by euthanasia? I say, well, you, you should befriend them. You should care for them. You should be with them. You should tell them there's an alternative. You should be willing to travel with them, but not travel to the point of their being killed. You can't, you can't condone it. You can't be part of it. You, you're only going to be part of that caring model to say, hey, no, no, there is another way. You know, I'm a human being and you're a human being. Together, we can go through these difficult times. And I understand alone, it's very difficult sometimes. Yeah. And I understand in our culture, we've become a very lonely culture. We've become a very separated culture. It's the other problem with secular humanism. They say we're all individual islands. We're all free to do as we please. 
But, you know, we're not actually not made that way as humans. We're made as interconnected beings. We need each other. And we recognize the importance of the of the interdependent nature of our of our person. Uh, so secular humanism actually denies the nature of what we're made to be as a human being. And it leads to killing. You know, uh, one final comment about that. Totalitarianism is a very good model for promoting more and more killing. And my own country has uh, a lot of, how would you say, types of totalitarianism within it. So our whole medical system, for instance, is uh, and we have universal health care, which has some great benefits, absolutely. But within that universal system, when you add euthanasia into it, you know, you add killing into it, it becomes a very big problem because obviously speaking, now it becomes an option for everyone. And it's an option that should be offered to everyone. So, you know, this is the kind of thing that we're getting where, you know, physicians are being told, well, you don't have to do it, but you're going to have to be involved in this by referring. You're going to have to be involved in this because these people ha have a right to these options because these are legal options. And in fact, uh, there's nothing morally right about this. This should never be a legal option to anyone to be involved with killing their patients, et cetera. And right now it's it's working under the kind of auspices of choice. Like you have choice. Right. You you have to give, you have to provide consent. This is the whole host of evils. That's, that's that, how they're selling it, correct. That, right. And and so how, you know, by the way, that's enough. I mean, that's bad enough. That's wicked enough, uh, it, you know, it, it, for us to respond uh, and and to try and, 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 push it back legislatively and culturally, but it doesn't just stop there. And, and no. Alex, I'm, I'm fearful. I've, I've heard of the, the idea no. of a death panel. You, you, you see yes. these by, by a judge's order, like in the example of the UK, somebody uh, recently that was killed uh, by a judge's order. Uh, the idea of somebody. Well, we have to be clear about it. that. That child was denied further care right. and treatment. That child did die a natural death. No one injected that child. Or That's anything. true. But uh, I mean, it was a decision by the court. That's correct, which I, I, That's have, right. I totally disagreed with. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So yes, absolutely. These are different kinds of circumstances, but yes. the idea that someone could make that decision on behalf of another individual where no one else can, can stand in the gap. Um, yeah. So now you have to be very clear that that's exactly it. It's sold us choice and autonomy. It's sold us freedom. But in fact, it's not about that at all. Now we have the dilemma. What do you do with the person with Alzheimer's dementia? Mm -hmm. So in Canada, this is starting to become a bigger and bigger debate. What do you do? They say these people are suffering. And isn't it terrible that because they didn't ask to be killed previous to having Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's or dementia, that we're forcing them to have to suffer? Well, wait a second here. We're talking about now killing people in the most vulnerable state of their existence because they never had a chance to ask for it. You know, the whole thing of choice, autonomy and everything, that's a sales pitch. It's all about killing. And they, they would then say, well, what about this person? We're talking about newborns now in Canada. The debate about the newborn and euthanasia is now on the table because the Quebec College of Physicians said that newborns should also have euthanasia. Uh, so a child born with a disability is better off dead that we should inject them instead of trying to give them the best life that they can have. No. And sometimes a parent is shocked when the child's born and the child has disabilities. I can understand. They're emotionally shocked and they might feel, I, I can't do this. I can understand them maybe feeling that way, but there's no reason to kill the baby. Nonetheless, that's what we're talking about in our own country now. And this, these are the kind of things that it moves to. In the U.S., you have 10 states that have legalized assisted suicide. But the assisted suicide lobby, they want euthanasia. They want, they, want it, they want homicide. They don't want just assisted suicide as much as it's not a just. The only difference between the two is in assisted suicide, the doctor prescribes you the, the poison and you take it yourself, whereas in euthanasia, the doctor injects you with the poison. The, the uh, intention is the same. The end is the same. The only difference is how it's carried out. But the how it's carried out makes it far more common because it's easier to get someone to lethally, lethally inject you than for you to take that uh, poison yourself. It's like philosophically, it's psychologically, it's so much easier to have someone kill you than for you to take it yourself. And, and, and so therefore you see that the numbers are lower where assisted suicide is legal as compared to euthanasia just because of how it works. But the assisted suicide lobby in the U.S. knows that the Americans – at this, at, at least in the past, we're not willing to support euthanasia because that was homicide. And they're pushing very hard now to start moving these laws into homicide rather than assisted suicide because they know they want death to be available. That's their goal, death on demand, right?
So you're looking for a university that's perfect for you. A school that has anything you could possibly need. Anything? You want a place that has the programs you want to study. And maybe a few more, just in case you change your mind. I think I'm going to sign up for the fashion design program. All right. A place with state-of-the-art facilities. I mean, look at this campus. And who doesn't love big town sports? And great recreational activities. Okay, now we're on a roll. Somewhere you can hike, slide, strike, shoot, climb, eat, and most importantly, eat. You want a place that takes you to space? Okay, maybe not, but we can teach you how to fly, or pastor a church, or run a business. And all that with a great view? Yeah, I think I know a place. That's their goal. Absolutely. Alex, you raise a really good point. And I'm so glad too that you mentioned 10 states. If the, those who are wondering, I think it was in 2022, 13,000 in Canada died, right? Uh, uh, yeah, 13,241 or something yeah. reportedly died. Yeah, yeah. And so it yeah. is, we're, we're on the heels of that. Uh, so the United yeah. States is not too far behind Canada in terms of making this um, something that is a reality across all 50 states. Final question. Um, do you do you see any place where we can turn this back, where we can turn the corner, where we can push back on this culturally, politically? Um, what is it going to take? Yeah. Well, I think what we need to do is we need to be very clear about what this is, because politically speaking, uh, this is not an, an easy uh, issue for state states uh, legislatures to pass. Let me give you an example. Connecticut has had an assisted suicide bill 11 years straight, and each time it's been defeated or put aside because they didn't have the votes. Connecticut is a Democrat you know, state. It has a Democrat governor. It has a Democrat Senate, a Democrat House, you know, and yet they continue to defeat it every single time because it takes the right type of uh, message. It also takes the reality. We have to be truthful about it. Uh, Connecticut has an advantage. It has certain key people with disabilities who have been out there every single year speaking out against it. You can be a progressive and be against killing. You can also, of course, be a person of faith or social conservative and be against killing. So, I mean, there, there's a reality here. You, you know, this is actually should never be a progressive issue if you start thinking about eugenics. Yeah. The concept of eugenics should never be a, a progressive issue. Now, of course, they don't sell it that way. Right. But when you start looking at it, that's exactly what it is. Mm. It is about killing people and it is about killing the vulnerable. Yeah. But I, I think that we have to be willing to say things as they are. Yeah, uh, I, I think sometimes we're too soft or we make the argument, well, we don't need this because we have good palliative care. And I would say, well, wait a second. You're arguing then that if we didn't have good palliative care or if we have excellent palliative care and people still want it, then it's OK. No, no, no. It's never OK to kill people. That doesn't mean we shouldn't be caring for people. Look at me, the, 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 my point. My point is, of course, we should be doing everything we can to help people be uh, cared for. Absolutely. <laughs> Without a question. But that's not freedom to kill them it's about abandonment yeah it's about it's about uh discriminating against them it's about deciding that their life isn't worth living that's a horrific thing sorry yeah and, and you can't control it one last thing there's only one line in the sand people say oh well we're just gonna have a little bit of killing it's okay it's only gonna be for those extreme cases but there's only one line in the sand either i'm allowed to kill you or i'm not allowed to kill you if i can't kill you then obviously speaking we're all equal under the law I can't kill you. You can't kill me. We have any type of equality. We go to our doctor. The doctor has no right in law to kill you. You allow assisted suicide, suddenly you've crossed that line. Now it's okay to kill somebody, but there's certain rules around it, we'll say. But you see, those rules then become discriminatory because then someone else says, well, wait a second here. I'm not terminally ill, but I have a very difficult health condition. Why can't I have it? Well, you see, once it's okay to kill, it's hard to justify that you can't kill the person with a difficult health condition just because they're not terminally ill. How can you justify that? Once you've said it's okay, you can justify killing, you've changed everything now. The line in the sand is crossed. Yeah. So what are we now debating? Then we, after that, what are you debating? You're debating who can do the killing and for what reasons? Yeah, that's right. That's where it goes to. Yeah, at that point, the bus is going downhill and, and it's only going to gain right. momentum. I totally agree. <laughs> that is a good one to end on. If I can kill you, 
then there's no other line that I can't cross. Right. There's no other line in the sand. Yeah. That's right. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Alex Schattenberg, thank you so much. Executive Director of Canada's Euthanasia Prevention Program Coalition, actually. Thank you thank so you. much yeah, for yeah. joining the Give Me Liberty podcast. I'm very happy to be with you. So it's good. Thank you. And folks, stick around for final thoughts. Hey, thanks so much for watching the Give Me Liberty podcast. Please like and subscribe and share with a friend. Only a true friend gives the gift of the Give Me Liberty podcast. I'm so grateful to Alex Schattenberg for sharing his heart, his testimony, his passion, and his ministry to protect and defend human life, not just from cradle, but certainly to the grave. God is the author and giver of life. He is the sustainer of life. It's in him that we live, move, and we have our being. We are his from the moment of conception, and we are eternal creatures. As C.S. Lewis reminds us, there are no mere mortals. There are not a single person that you've met who only exists for a certain period of time. We exist for all eternity. And on that basis, no one has the moral authority to take their own life. The surge of policies in support of euthanasia in the West are absolutely disturbing, but they should not be surprising as our culture denies God and his role as the author and giver of life, and it removes the foundation for believing that life has intrinsic value at all, certainly euthanasia will be on the rise. As Alex said so well, euthanasia is not suicide. Make no mistake, it is absolutely homicide. We must not fall into the trap of using the left's terms to discuss these issues. We have to honestly articulate the heart of the matter and the heart of the issue. As Christians, hearing about this issue and these policies should be unsettling, but it should also be a motivation and a call to action. Alex told us that people are seeking to take their own lives because they feel abandoned. Let's mobilize as a church and make those who are suffering feel cared for and know that they are loved. Let's give them hope, an everlasting hope that we know comes only through Jesus Christ. So if you find yourself feeling discouraged by the darkness of this age right now, heed the Apostle Paul's admonition in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, not to grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So never quit. Until next time, God bless you.